Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and this is the first of a three-part series where I talk about my experience of owning a Tesla over 200,000 miles. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure and do that because these three videos are going to be incredible insight into the cost of ownership as well as how a Tesla wears over 200,000 miles. I purchased my 2013 Model S three years old with 16,000 miles. Due to be driving more than 50,000 miles a year, the thought was to reduce the cost to fuel my vehicle. And if I could do that by buying an electric vehicle, well known to be more efficient in total emissions, it would be a win-win. I do think it's important to add just a few disclaimers about my analysis here. That way we all are on the same page and looking at these numbers with the right context. The first thing is this analysis does not include monthly payment or insurance since these things vary significantly by owner. The second is numbers outside of my specific use of my Tesla and my specific use case should be considered estimates. The third is the purpose of this analysis was to get an idea about how much money I saved in operational costs by going electric. And lastly, for brevity's sake, I'm giving you a summary of my findings. I'll make the spreadsheet of my calculations available in the video description. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing I wanted to do was compare the cost of my Tesla Model S 75 kilowatt hour battery pack to something of similar price. So I selected the Audi A7 Quattro. And if I had driven the Audi over the same 200,000 miles, here are my estimates for what it would have cost to fuel and power that vehicle. With a 19.8 gallon gasoline tank, it would have gotten me 455 miles on a single tank. With an estimated fuel cost of $3.20 per gallon, that would cost me $63 every time I were to go to the gas pump and fill up the tank. I estimated that over 200,000 miles, it would have taken 440 fill-ups, costing me $27,851. And oil changes over that same period of time, I estimate would be about $125. And if I were to do that every 5,000 miles, that's a total cost of $5,000. And lastly, with the transmission fluid change at $175, changing that every 30,000 miles, the cost of that would have been $1,167 for a grand total over that 200,000 miles of $34,000 and 17. Now the other thing that I wanted to do was to compare the cost of my Tesla to the Subaru Legacy that I had. So let's run through those numbers as well. The tank size in gallons was 18 and a half. On a full tank of gas that would have given me 536 miles. And at a $2.60 cost per gallon that would cost me $48.10 to fill up. And I estimated that over the 200,000 miles I would have filled up 373 times, costing me $17,931. An oil change for the Subaru, $75, costing me a total of $3,000 over that 200,000 miles driven. And lastly, the transmission fluid change at $100 a pop every 30,000 miles would have cost me $667 for a total of $21,598. Now let's talk about what it cost me to power my Model S. The electricity cost at my house is 11 cents per kilowatt hour. And my car currently has a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. And for those that have been following my channel for at least a year, you know that I had a battery swap a little over a year ago. It used to be a 60 kilowatt hour, now it's a 75. But for simplicity's sake, we're gonna base everything off of the 75 kilowatt hour pack. It's also important to mention that I did buy this car used with 16,000 miles on it already. So I did some calculations on what it would have cost me if I would have paid for those 16,000 miles worth of electricity. That comes out to $510. And of course, factoring in all of the driving that I did post-purchase, it has cost me $5,872. Now, one thing I want to add here that's important to note is that of the more than 53,000 kilowatt hours that I've used to power my vehicle since I purchased it, not all of that is paid electricity. I have used Tesla's superchargers. I don't have a way to estimate 
what I have used at superchargers and what I've used at my house. So we're gonna assume the worst case scenario, which is that I have personally paid for all of that electricity. It has probably cost me less money than what I've notated here, but this is just for simplicity's sake and as to not draw out this video too much. And the cost of annual service is $850. Now that used to be something that they recommended. They no longer recommend that annual service, which I think is interesting. They essentially have taken the position now of if there is an issue, bring it in. Otherwise, don't worry about any maintenance on the actual car. I did pay for that the first year and that was $850. I have not paid for an annual service since then. And everything, grand total wise, to power and fuel my vehicle over the 200,000 miles was $7,232. If we look at this from a cost per mile basis, the Audi A7 Quattro is 17 cents per mile, the Subaru 11 cents per mile, and the Tesla is a staggering four cents per mile. So when you compare those on a percentage basis, the Audi is 79% more expensive to run than the Tesla, and the Subaru is 67% more expensive to run. And after posting some of these preliminary numbers on Twitter and getting some feedback from many of you who are probably watching this video right now, it got me thinking, I wonder how much it would cost if I lived in Europe. I know that European fuel prices to power gasoline vehicles are more expensive due to taxes. And so I did some quick analysis on that as well, and here's what I found. The cost per tank for the Audi A7 would be $112.51. Over that 200,000 miles, that's $49,450. An oil change I estimate to be about $150, and over the course of that 200,000 miles driven, that's $6,000 in cost. Transmission fluid changes, about $200 a pop, costing $1,333 for a total of $56,784. The Subaru Legacy, I estimate that to cost $91 per tank of gas, totaling $33,923 over that 200,000 miles. An oil change, about 100 bucks, totaling $4,000. Transmission fluid change, $125, totaling $833 for a grand total of $38,757. Now let's dive into the service and repairs, all the things that I have had done to the car to fix or repair it over the course of my ownership. You can see here in 2017, I was definitely taking my car to the service center quite a bit. It is important to remind you that this is a 2013 vehicle. This is an early production model with a low VIN number of 8,000. These are all things that to me just seem like poor quality parts. Nonetheless, because I bought the car with a 50,000 mile warranty, I was able to take it in with no cost to me with the exception of a right side mirror broken, which, um, which was self-inflicted as well as the front left door handle light out. And you can see that around July of 2017, my 50,000 mile warranty expired. And that's where you start to see some of these costs pop up like the front left door handle light out. There's a light underneath the door handle. Uh, that cost me about $160. And then this is a real unusual one. I all of a sudden started to find some water on the inside interior headliner of the car. The seal that runs behind the chrome applique across the doors had gone bad and let water in. And that one was just under $1,400. So in 2017, it cost me $1,929, and that was 16 items that were repaired in 2017. In 2018, some of those costs do continue and the costs do go up in comparison to the previous year. Of course, a windshield replacement, that's a pretty standard thing. That 250 is the deductible. The front suspension replacement is by far to date the most expensive repair that I've had at $2,536. The suspension just appeared to, to be worn out. That does seem like it's a little bit soon, but I haven't had any issues with suspension since then. It has worked fine and no, no problems there. 
the brake caliper replacement that was four hundred and thirty nine dollars and you can see in 2018 i also had that battery replacement as i mentioned before i'll go into detail about the battery replacement in the next video where i cover battery degradation so in 2018 my cost for repairs was three thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars at five items repaired and in 2019 the repairs got even less you can see that i've only had to take it in for really three things an a-pillar air ingress that was at goodwill they just put some uh, some some foam in in the door that did help prevent some of that air from getting in especially in the winter time i think that's a known issue with the early model s's i believe they fixed that with uh, current production versions wiper blades that's a pretty insignificant one. They did do that goodwill, although they didn't have to, and I certainly was not expecting that. And lastly, the charge port not opening and some wire corrosion. This is the most recent issue that I had. This cost me $837, which does seem quite expensive, but the important thing is that it's now working and I don't have to worry about prying open the door with a screwdriver like I did when it was broken. So the cost in 2019 for me has been $837.50 with three items. And when we look at this from a year over year items perspective, you can see that in 2017 at the 16 items repaired quite a bit, I was actually in the service center at least once a month, sometimes twice a month to get issues taken care of. But in 2018, that fell 69% year over year and then in 2019 it fell an additional 40 percent so i've hardly had to go into the service center to get things taken care of and though i do love seeing and talking with everyone at the service center i'm glad that i'm not spending my valuable time driving to and from as well as waiting for things to be repaired and of course this has had a financial lift by not spending money repairing things on my vehicle and on to the cost of maintenance not surprisingly most of these maintenance costs have been tires and driving over 50,000 miles a year you'll get an idea about how quickly i run through these tires now i did recently do a video on what tires i recommend you can obviously see here which ones i'm using but i do go into detail in this video about why i like these summer and winter tires i'll link that video up in the description in case you're curious about why i prefer these tires and why they work well for me so over the course of the 200,000 miles tires wheels and tire rotations have cost me nine thousand one hundred and fourteen dollars and sixty five cents now let's go ahead and wrap everything up by tallying all the numbers so we can see what it has cost me to power and run this vehicle over the course of the 200k the fuel cost has been seven thousand two hundred and thirty one dollars and seventy one cents service and repairs five thousand nine hundred and ninety two and forty cents maintenance nine thousand one hundred and fourteen and sixty five cents for a grand total of twenty two thousand dollars three hundred and thirty nine my cost per mile when i tally all of those up is eleven cents per mile or for kilometers it's seven cents per kilometer in summary, when I first began looking at a Tesla, it was a significant step up in purchase price from my Subaru Legacy, but my hypothesis was in my initial analysis that it was going to be less expensive to power the car with the Tesla than it was the Subaru. And after compiling all of this data over 200,000 miles, my hypothesis was correct it is less expensive quite a bit less expensive to power an electric vehicle over a gasoline vehicle when you factor in all of the cost to power it even when you tally up all of the cost that i've incurred to power and operate my tesla over the course of these 200,000 miles it still works out to be less expensive by about ten or eleven thousand dollars over the audi when just factoring in the cost to fuel the Audi alone. So that delta between the Tesla and the Audi gets even greater if you were to factor in the cost of tires and repairs of that Audi. That wraps up the first part of a three-part series where I share my experience 
of my Tesla over 200,000 miles. I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you're not subscribed, don't forget to do that before this video ends so that you get updates on when I publish the next two videos in my series. Sean from All Things EV, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch everyone on the next one.